Hello again everyone, welcome back to PTAT Chemistry channel. So this is the beginning of a series of lecture tutorials, basically the lessons that are on chemical formula. This is for the 5129 combined science uh, curriculum, uh, where I am specifically teaching the chemistry component only. And uh, this is part of the 14 to 16 years old uh, chemistry uh, component for this curriculum. So yeah, let's get started. In the curriculum, uh, Cambridge said that candidates should be able to state the formula of the elements, first of all, and the compounds named in the subject content. The subject content here referred to the previous topic, uh, which I had covered with you, that was on chemical bonding. So we spent a couple of weeks on chemical bonding, which included ionic as well as covalent bonding, uh, where you have ionic bonding between Ionic bonding that was between metal and non-metals. So we have metal and non-metals that will combine or form ionic bond. You also have covalent. Covalent, I think my handwriting is too small there, so I'll just write somewhere else. You also have covalent bond, and covalent bond is sharing of electrons between non-metals and non-metals. So non-metals and non-metals. So all those things from the previous topic, they link very well to this new topic. And that is why they say candidates should be able to state the formula of the elements and the compounds in the subject content. Now on to 15.1.2, they say define. Define means you should be able to, you know, if they ask you what is meant by molecular formula, you should be able to tell them that molecular formula means how many of each atom, so the number, and the type, the type means the different kind. So how many you have for the different type or the different kinds of different atoms in one molecule. One molecule is very, very important because one molecule means covalent molecule. When you have a molecule, you must have a covalent molecule. You must have a covalent bond, which means you must have sharing of electrons between non-metals and non-metals. That is a given. That is why you get a covalent bond. When non-metal and non-metal share electrons, they give you covalent bond, which gives you covalent molecule. If you have one single molecule, then you can work out how many atoms you have, which is the number of atoms, how many atoms of the different types of elements that you have. So the number and the type of different atoms in one molecule will give you molecular formula. Molecular because in one single molecule. Now you're also expected to deduce the formula of a simple compound. They don't tell you covalent or ionic. They just say formula of a simple compound from relative numbers of atoms or ions. When you just have atoms, atoms and atoms combined to give you covalent bond. But if you have ions, this term is called ions. Ions are not atoms. Ions mean charge charged particles so they could be positively charged ion they could be negatively charged ions positively charged ions come from metals metals lose electrons to give you positively charged ion that was part of the deal when you actually covered ionic bond in the previous topic on the other hand you have non-metal oops sorry about that you have non-metals so what happened with the non-metals is the non-metals would want to gain electrons. So they are gaining something which is negatively charged. That's why they form negatively charged ions. When you have atoms, atoms are uncharged. Atoms are not charged. And as a result of it, they have no charge. That means the number of protons equal to number of electron. This link very well to your atomic structure topic where we counted the number of protons as well as electrons and neutrons when you fill in those boxes. Very, very popular in exam question. We have seen it in the last topical test as well as your, um, your last assessment, your mid-year assessment a few months ago. Anyway, I'll leave 15.1.4 and 15.1.5 for the next uh, lesson where I'll go through it uh, uh, in the next lecture tutorial or the one after that. 
So let's go through this molecular formula. Remember we said just now, molecular formula means in one single molecule. If you have one single molecule, it means you have simple covalent molecules having simple molecular structure. This was all from structure and bonding topic. If you think about this term called structure, stated in the bonding topic, stated in the bonding syllabus, it's a candidate should be able to explain in terms of structure and bonding why certain simple covalent molecules have low melting and boiling point, why they cannot conduct electricity at all, not when solid, not when liquid, not when gas, they are just insulators. Those were properties of covalent compound from the previous topic. Anyway, ionic compound contain ions. Ions means ionic compound, and these are not molecules at all. So when you have molecular formula, they cannot be ionic. Cannot, cannot be ionic compound at all. Which is why all of these are covalent molecules. All of these have the dot and cross diagram. So you got to differentiate, you got to distinguish and tell the difference between the dot and the cross. And these are from the bonding topic. This was from bonding work 4 and bonding work 5 plus the covalent bonding bit in the notes because bonding work 4 and bonding work 5, the tutorials of which are available on the channel and um, they should be able to you know uh, go along and uh, uh, they are in line with what we cover as part of the lesson tutorials which we, you can you know browse around the channel and view that uh, tutorial video again if you are still very unfamiliar with it. Hydrogen H2, so that's because hydrogen atom with a single electron, if you draw a shell like this, the hydrogen has only one uh, electron in the atom, whereas it could be sharing this one electron with another hydrogen atom, then altogether you will get two hydrogen atoms, one dot from one hydrogen, one cross from the other hydrogen. This now, both hydrogen have a completely filled first shell, of which two electrons are the maximum that the first shell can occupy. So this is now a happy molecule, molecule because two atoms combined together. Element, these are element because there's only one type of atom. This goes back to a few months ago. Element because only one type of atoms, which is just hydrogen atoms. And this is a molecule. Why do you call it a molecule? You call it a molecule because it's made out of two or more atoms bonded together. And you learn this as a covalent bond because they share electrons between nonmetal and nonmetal. Between oxygen and oxygen, they form two covalent bonds. You have one covalent bond there and another covalent bond. So a pair of it is one covalent bond. And then the other pair, which I shall, which I shall draw in blue, this is one covalent bond and um, should probably draw it with blue to show that you know you can count covalent bond there's another covalent bond there okay so altogether oxygen form two covalent bond because oxygen is in group six so it's got two six it wants to share it wants to share two electrons to get fully filled outer shell and there's the objective there to get to fully fill valence, valence, V-A-L-E-N-C-E, -E, V-A-L-E-N-C-E, valence shell means outermost shell. It's a recurring concept when we did bonding again and again and again. Chlorine on the other hand, chlorine atom is 2,7, so they want to share one electron to complete the outer shell. Hydrogen, has got one electron only, so you are just want to share one electron to complete the outer shell. These are molecules. These are not only just molecules, but you know, from that from that first line onwards. So what can I say? Eh? Um, those first three things on top there, those are what you call elements because they only contain one type of atoms, whereas this all of these are called compound because the way to define a compound, uh, lower secondary science student can tell you. Uh, even you, a couple of months ago, you did the definition of compound. So it's a pure substance containing, uh, containing two or consisting two or more elements chemically combined together. 
So these are definitions uh, straight from your notes a couple of months ago uh, as you are expected to have mastered them what is element, compound and mixture. Elements chemically combined together in a fixed ratio. So these are the very formula of elements and also compounds that the syllabus expect you to master. These are all straight from the covalent bonding topic as stated in uh, work 4 and work 5 as well as notes for covalent bonding. When we went through the lesson, I told you that Cambridge will and can ask you any of these. This is water, H2O, single bond between hydrogen and oxygen like that. But then oxygen is in group 6. So it's got six valence electrons, it shares two electrons, which is one cross there and another cross. So you're still left with four more because you know how to count. Chlorine is in group seven. So they just share one electrons there. Therefore, you're still left with six more electrons which are not used for bonding. That's why there are six crosses. Nitrogen is in group five. So I only use three electrons to share one two and three so out of five i still have three more so you know you still have two electrons left in order to um, um yeah to form well not not to form covalent bond at all so there's nh3 it's called ammonia next one is methane methane is carbon is in group four so they will share four electrons so one two three four each hydrogen share one which means carbon doesn't have any electrons left over unlike this this and this Nitrogen is in group 5, so 2, 5, 5 electrons in the outer shell. So it uses 3 electrons for sharing because it wants to complete the outer shell. Complete the outer shell, I uses 3 for sharing, which means I'm left with uh, 2 electrons because I started with 5 in the outer shell. I use 3 for sharing, I'm still left with 2 on each nitrogen. And that's why I get a triple bond there because I share 3 electrons per nitrogen. Each nitrogen now, it has five original cross, share three dots there. So altogether, five plus three is eight. Same thing goes for that nitrogen. Last but not least, CO2 is the gas you breathe out as you are breathing. Respiration, it's the circle of life. You take in oxygen, oxygen gas, and you breathe out carbon dioxide gas. So carbon in group four form one, two, three, and four covenant bond. You can hopefully see a pair, second pair, the third pair, and the fourth pair. Oxygen is in group 6, it forms two covalent bonds, 1 and 2. Therefore, it still has four more electrons, 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4 on each oxygen, which you got to show very correctly for your dot and cross diagram. So these are all straight from the syllabus, from the last topic. This topic is basically telling you that you are expected to be able to state this formula of elements and compounds. Moving very quickly onto the next page, you should be able to use your periodic table to find the elements of these compounds as stated in the atomic structure topic. Uh, when you did the electronic configuration, you drew circles after circles uh, to show the shells. You are supposed to know the first 20 elements. So if you look at the periodic table, this is element number 23, sodium. Element number 20 is calcium, so it's CM. Element number 17 is chlorine. Carbon is element number 6 with a symbol C. Copper is somewhere in the middle of your periodic table. If I'm not mistaken, uh, it's element number 29. Let me just pull out my periodic table. It is element number 20. No, <coughs> excuse me. It is element number 29. The symbol is Cu. Argon is element number 18. Sulfur. So this is how you spell sulfur in the modern periodic table. S-U-L-F-U-R. Aluminium is element number 13. Element number 13. Element number 9, number 9 is fluorine, silicon is element number 14, potassium is element number 19, magnesium is element number 12, so the symbol is Mg there, hydrogen is the simple one, zinc, zinc is element number 30, Zinc, and last but not least, iron is element number 26 with the atomic number 26, proton number 26 in the periodic table, it's got the symbol Fe there. Just to complete off, uh, before I sign off for this uh, lesson tutorial, for this first uh, one of this series, we've got a formula of elements and compounds. So we are saying that some gases, which are elements, these gases must be covalent. They are covalent molecule, but they are elements because they contain only one type of atoms. 
we see all these are one type of atoms. This is called monatomic, monatomic, or you can call it monoatomic. Personally, I like the word monoatomic because it's a lot easier to understand in the context of the next example, which is diatomic. Diatomic, di means two, atomic means atoms. So there are two atoms bonded together. So that is the definition of diatomic. Carbon dioxide, there are two oxygen uh, bonded to carbon. Diatomic, two times atoms bonded together. Monoatomic, monoatomic is the same as monatomic, so it's not a wrong spelling. It's just that you could spell it as monatomic or you could spell it as mon monoatomic. Personally, I prefer this because it's easier to remember. Monoatomic, diatomic. Mono, mono means one. Atomic, well, atom. So it's just as one atom. One could also be interpreted as single, single atom. So no bond at all. What kind of um, um, what kind of elements in the predictable do not form bond at all? You are looking at group eight. Group eight has got fully fill, fully fill outer shell. So there's valence shell, meaning outermost shell. And if that is fully filled, that means, well, if that's fully filled, then, you know, they don't form any bond at all. That's why all those things, neon, uh, helium, argon, krypton, xenon, radon, all those gases in the noble gases, that's why the name is called noble gases for group 8, they are all monoatomic. Hence, they're asking you to fill in this table. Monoatomic consists of single atom from your group 8. So group 8 means it shows this, the very last column in the predictable. Group 8 has got fully filled valence shell. Okay. Hence, they are unreactive. They do not form bond. Do not form bond. should probably improve my handwriting a little bit. Unreactive. Okay. Do not form any bond at all. That is because they have completely filled valence shell. That means they are stable, stable already. Okay. Neon gas is Ne, helium gas is He, xenon gas is Xe. Now, diatomic molecule, this is a definition they like to ask you to define. As I said, two times atoms joined together uh, by the covalent bond. What they also like to ask you is, they give you these, they ask you to fill in the blank. So you should be able to fill in the blank with diatomic versus monoatomic. Nitrogen just now, nitrogen, nitrogen, triple bond. So the formula for nitrogen gas is N2. Oxygen, oxygen, double bond, as you saw earlier. Hydrogen, hydrogen, single bond. Single bond, but it's still existing as diatomic molecule. Two nitrogen atoms, two oxygen atoms, two hydrogen atoms. These are all group seven. So they got something, 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 seven. So they need to share, need to share one electrons. So all of this is XX, where X equal to group seven element. So what we have there is F2, Cl2, I2, and Br2. Okay, I think I'd like to stop there for this uh, first part of a multi video series, multi-part video series on uh, chemical formula equations. Quite a big topic for the combined science 5129 chemistry component. Um, and I hope that has been useful. If that has been useful, click the button on the bottom right to subscribe to the channel and share the channel widely with friends, chat group, juniors, seniors, uh, teachers, relative, whoever else you think might find this tutorial video or this tutorial series, in fact, uh, useful. And um, yeah, follow me at ptet.chemistry, ptet.chemistry. Uh, to get connected, sending questions, and uh, yeah, just to um, just stay connected, I guess. All right, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next tutorial video.